All right, working with Azure Functions, show metrics, and create a dashboard. In previous demos, we've created uh, a function in Visual Studio Code, deployed it, uh, and we did a benchmark against it. But now let's look at uh, the dashboards that you can create. So um, operations would probably want to look at um, how how something is running, maybe currently or in the past, but all of that can be uh, done with dashboards. Now, in order for this demo, what I've uh, to do this demo, what I've done is I've added a second uh, trigger. So in my code base, I actually have uh, the original trigger, but I've added a second one. Very quickly, I want to show you how I did that. Um, if, I, if I do Azure Functions, I'm actually uh, limiting. Um, all the available palette options to um, just the Azure Functions one. As you can see, there's quite a few options available. And all I did was I uh, selected Create Function, uh, and then it asked me, um, it asked me, you know, what's the name of the function and what was the trigger. So here it is, and the only difference in this one, it said hello over there, versus the previous one, it just says hello. Okay, so that's really the only difference. And then after that, I, I did deploy um, using uh, the Azure tools. Um, and uh, that's how uh, I was able to add the second trigger. Now, if we look at our functions in the blade, we can actually see that they're, both of them are there. If I dive into that, uh, one of the things you're going to see uh, right off the bat is actually a, um, sometimes the portal gets confused. Uh, what you'll see is uh, a, a dashboard on the bottom. Now, what you, uh, what you can you might want to customize this. So what you can do is you can click on pin um, and select which dashboard you'd like to send that to. So I have a dashboard called Modern Website, and I'm going to pin that to there. Um, and I may want to look at maybe the failure rates or uh, the temporary failures or whichever. But let's just take a look at these two for now. Um, and if I switch over to my dashboard, um, I refresh it, what will happen is I should be able to see that dashboard has these two in it. Um, I can edit this dashboard. I can move these things around. So I can, let's say, um, this is my function two, and I can have a view of the execution count, and I can have a view of the number of requests that are coming in and I can customize this dashboard um, just by by adding these panels uh, whichever ones I like but other times uh, you might want to look at a little bit more deeper uh, what's going on so just to let you know I've been running uh, another two sets of of, of uh, benchmarking against it uh, two different instances were running at the same time. This one got 132 requests per second. This one got 131 requests per second. So pretty consistent, uh, about 260 uh, combined. But let's actually look at how we can actually go back in time and look at that data uh, and, and add that to here. So I'm going to go in back into my function. I'm going to go at the top layer, layer. And what I've done is I've actually enabled diagnostic settings. And in diagnostic settings, you can configure the function to save the log files to a storage account or send it to a log analytics workspace. Um, I've done both. Uh, if we look at our setting, we can see that it's I'm storing the seven days of metrics and I'm also sending uh, everything to this log analytics workspace. Once it's there, um, I can actually go look at what's happening so by clicking on logs. And here, I'm going to get uh, a couple of canned queries that I can run against it. Um, and, uh, you know, so let's take a look at response time trend. Uh, I can click on that. And this fills this, um, this table in. Uh, now, I can look at this as, uh, as numbers. Uh, it looks like I've got two numbers here. And that's why that straight line was there. This may not be that interesting. So let's actually um, expand that a little. So. Um, what we're going to do is instead of what this query says is that show me all the requests where the timestamp is more recent than 12 hours ago. So let's actually do that and make that one hour. And then here um, it's summarizing um, the, the, the average duration and it's using buckets of 10 minute uh, increments. 
right? So let's run this. And what we should see is that, again, um, I'm seeing these two things, but let's actually make it a little bit more granular. I would like to make buckets of maybe one minute buckets, and I should be able to see a little bit more data. I can see um, now a little bit more detail, and I can make this even more granular. Actually, let's take this um, comment out, this render, um, and we're going to change this to maybe uh, every five seconds. Okay, now I'm going to see five second buckets, um, and I should see a lot more data, but here, this gives me a lot more granularity. And if, if now I can actually look at this as a chart um, and I can see that I ran these two, um, two tests um, between, uh, looks like uh, the last five minutes here. Uh, and it looks like there's another one up here. There's an older test here. Um, and, that, and so now um, my render, is actually what's changing it. So in this case, maybe I don't want to look at it as a time chart. Maybe I want to look at it as a scatter chart. If I run that, and actually let's not look at an hour ago because I want to zoom into this. So let's look at the last uh, maybe 20 minutes. Okay, I run that. I should have a better view of uh, of what's happening here. Uh, looks like it's um, the duration was jumping all over the place. Okay, um, but if I like this, I can actually pin this. Um, to, as an Azure dashboard to my modern website dashboard. And I come back to this dashboard. If I reload it, um, that's going to be available to me as well. So there's my scatter. So that's kind of how easy it is to create queries uh, and add it to your dashboard. This dashboard can be shared. It can be pinned uh, amongst the operators. And you can create uh, so many different um, views on the data, you can even create alerts. So actually in here, I could create a new alert and uh, let's say if something has occurred, maybe it's too slow, maybe there's some exceptions, maybe some 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 exceptional situation has occurred. If I can create a rule for it, I can create an alert. And that alert can actually integrate with, uh, with a logic app or it can integrate with uh, a webhook or uh, uh, an email or an SMS. There's so many things that are available to that. Um, that again, we have to save for a later, later time, uh, not enough time for that, but there's something else I wanted to show you while we're here. So, um, let's, let's explore requests a little. Okay. So, um, the way this is KQL and the way it works is that, um, it's not quite SQL. It's more of a modern take on SQL. So here I'm just saying, you know, show me the data that's in requests. And, uh, it comes back and it says, I'm showing you only the first. 30,000 rows. Um, so I can scroll down and I can see those. Now, what I'm seeing here is the trigger name. You see that? Um, so I could actually filter this by the two triggers. So let's say a request where um, trigger, I can't actually see it, so I'm going to click away. So name, okay, so name equals HTTP trigger. Okay, so now if I do this, what I should see is only requests for trigger one. And, you know, as you guessed it, if I change that to trigger two, I'll see just the trigger two. Um, but maybe I want to compare the two, right? So here um, I've done this and then I can do what I had done earlier. Um, and I can, so I've filtered by trigger and then I can say summarize, uh, count by uh, do timestamp timestamp um, oh I'm sorry we want to create a bin bin which basically creates buckets five seconds and oh one thing I didn't do is the most recent so where timestamp is greater than a go 15. Uh, 20 minutes is good. So this is the same as before. Um, and um, we saw that. So render. And here are my options. I can create a tree map, a table, a tree, a time chart, scatter chart, pie chart, column chart, bar chart. Let's look at bar chart. 
this is probably what more people are used to looking at. Um, and so here I'm actually seeing it horizontally. Maybe that's not so good. Maybe I want to look at it as a column chart. I think. Uh, autocomplete is wrecking havoc. Um, so this is maybe what more I was used to. And there's ways to actually overlay additional charts on top of this. So um, I can do trigger one in this one color and I can do trigger two in a separate color. Uh, and maybe I can do durations. Maybe I can correlate this with the number of requests. All that can be done. Um, if you'd like to learn more about KQL, point your browser to aka.ms slash KQL. Um, and then you'll you'll go to the the documentation page for Cousteau query language. Um,